Hi, I'm Anthony from The Basement Read, and welcome once again to our channel. As always, if this is your first time tuning in, we're a retail aquatic pet store and houseplant shop located in Columbia, Missouri, and this is the channel where we talk about everything related to the aquatic side of our business. And today, I'm here to talk about this tank right behind me. This is our 58 gallon rimless soft coral display right behind the front counter in the store. It's already been featured a couple of times on this channel. First, when we set it up in December of last year, and then an update video earlier this year after everything started to grow in. Today, I'm here to give one more update on it before we actually upgrade the tank one more time. As you can see, it's pretty much overgrown the tank and it all needs somewhere to grow. And the best solution to that in my mind is to just give it more room to grow. So I have a six foot, 120 gallon tank all ready to go for this. We won't do anything with that in this video, but that's just sort of the impetus for this video. This tank is getting upgraded, so this is a chance to document it before we do that. Since we've already featured this tank a couple of times, I won't get too much into the nitty gritty of what exactly makes it tank. You can look back at our installation video and our first update video if you're interested in all of that. But for a really quick rundown, it's a 58 gallon rimless tank that's three feet by 18 inches. For lighting, we have two Vipar Spectra, that's like Amazon black box type LED reef lights. It has a simple 18 by 18 inch sump. We don't run any sort of skimmer. It used to have a refugium on it, but recently we've weaned it off of that with no ill effects whatsoever. So really, this tank is just a light, a tank, a sump, and a return pump. We don't even have any extra flow aside from the return pump up top because we like to feature this Xenia in here and the pulsing that it does. And we find that it does that best when we have very low flow up top and none of the other soft corals seem to care either. Additionally, we've never done a water change on this tank since we set it up. It's been 11 months now and it's still going strong. There's a little bit of cyanobacteria in some of the lower flow parts of the tank but we fix that simply by stirring up the sand and it takes about a week to come back. So I don't even think it's a huge nutrient issue, it's just a flow issue. And again, the flow is low in here on purpose, so what are you gonna do, right? Other than that though, we just top it off, feed the tank, dose a little bit of Red Sea AB Plus every now and then, and put a couple drops of Lugol solution in there to raise the iodine once a month, and it hasn't skipped a beat. This has just been solid growth the entire time we've had it set up. I'm really happy with it. So what's new with the tank since our last update video? Well, to put it simply, an explosion of growth. I mentioned the AB Plus that we dose, and we only started that since the last video. Xenia has started to slow down just a little bit, and I had a suspicion that it was nutrition related. So we started dosing the AB Plus, and while I knew that that would help things, what I didn't realize would be that this would be lighting a fuse that would just lead to an explosion in growth. Over the course of just a couple of months, the Xenia marched clear across the tank and filled in every empty space. Uh, it covered up a couple of zoanthids and things like that, but as far as our larger colonies of soft coral in here, like our large leathers, or the already well-established hairy mushrooms, things like that. Uh, it doesn't seem to be bothered by the Xenia growing up against it, so I'm not mad about it. I knew what I was getting into when I put the Xenia into the tank. A lot of people call Xenia a weed because of how much it grows, and I can't disagree with that. It grows like crazy, but this is what I wanted for the tank. This is the look I like, I really enjoy it, and it hasn't been a problem. The other corals that mainly make up this aquascape are our large leather coral colonies. This toadstool here especially, this thing gets massive towards the end of the day. Right now, it just fills up maybe about a 10 inch space, but right when this light clicks over to blue for a couple hours before it turns off, this thing swells and fills the entire corner of this tank here, and it's really a sight to behold. Other than that, our cabbage leather has been doing awesome. Uh, this thing is about three or four times the size it was when we started. It looks super healthy, it just has super open polyps all the time. Uh, super, super bright green too. It is as neon green as you can get in a coral, similar to a, a kryptonite candy cane or something of that nature. Really, really love that coral. Um, our green toadstools are chugging right along. Uh, star polyps are doing well on the back wall. And then for our other large leather coral colonies, we have 
uh, what I call spaghetti leathers. Uh, I'm not sure that that's exactly what they are, but they look like spaghettis to me. That's what I've been rolling with. Uh, we have a huge pink one. Uh, that thing's just been getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's about the size of a basketball. Uh, and then this bright green one is chugging right along. Uh, that one has really nice color to it. Uh, almost as bright as the cabbage leather. Some other neat things that we have going on in the tank are that I'm hanging on to a little God Spawn bounce mushroom for a buddy of mine right now. Uh, this isn't staying in the tank forever. Again, I'm just holding on to it for a friend as he's kind of uh, between tanks at the moment. I have a few of his things and it's looked really nice in here. So I figured why not hold it there in the meantime. Uh, I really like it though. So I think that whenever I give that back to my friend, I'll probably go looking for a nice bounce mushroom and put it right back there. Uh, these are mostly cheap corals in here uh, that you can find readily available. That was sort of the theme of the tank with these soft corals. Uh, but it's nice to have some nicer soft corals in there too and bounce mushrooms absolutely fit that bill. The other coral that's definitely worth mentioning is the Astrio Spicularia. Uh, this guy grows underneath the large toadstool and this is a really cool soft coral that you don't see all that often. Uh, the first time I ever saw it was a couple of years ago. ORA was selling it, uh, aquacultured, and since then I haven't really seen it. This piece has grown from a tiny little frag that I got from a customer, like a little half inch piece, out to a really nice sized little mat. It's just encrusting right underneath this coral. Generally speaking, the really cool thing about this tank is that all of the corals don't mind sharing this space. It's all right up against each other and nothing stings each other like what you would have going on in a stony coral reef. Additionally, there's a lot of really cool stuff going on in the more marginal parts of the reef. You know, the parts that don't get a whole ton of light, uh, things that just kind of incidentally fall in and then establish themselves in the bottom of the tank. There are a ton of feather dusters filling in every space that the corals aren't, every dark corner. Those are really neat. Uh, we have a variety of little mushrooms that aren't necessarily thriving down there, but aren't dying either. Again, there's what I call the marginal zone of the reef, where things just kind of don't have the most light available, but things are still doing their best they can to fill in that little niche in the reef there. So it's cool to see. Uh, there's some little fireworks style clove polyps that to be honest, I'm not even sure how they got into the tank, uh, but sure enough, they just kind of sprouted up alongside those little feather dusters and stuff. They must have marched in on another plug or honestly, who, who knows? These rocks have been in many tanks before they were in this tank. Uh, either way, they ended up in this tank and now they're starting to take off and it is pretty cool to see. As far as what hasn't gone well with this tank, there's one incident that instantly springs to mind and it happened actually just a few weeks ago. I mentioned that the tank used to have a refugium on it. And the way that went down is that it used to grow a lot of Chetomorph algae really well that was sucking down the nitrates. And then around the same time that the Xenia really started taking off, the Chetomorph algae really stopped thriving. And I think that it's just that the Xenia was uptaking all the nutrients that the Chetomorph had been taking up before. Not the biggest deal. Well, eventually that Chetomorph gets down to just the tiniest little ball of algae. And I decided I was gonna use the refugium light for something else, so pull it right off the tank. That's the last I think about it. Uh, then I go home for the day. Uh, next day is Monday, which is my off day. Uh, usually I'll come up to the store and check things out on the off day, but this Monday I decided that uh, everything would be fine. I didn't need to go up and check on the store at all. Well, this tank got a little bit low on water from evaporation. I don't use auto top offs in the store because for me that's a thing that can fail and can spill water on the floor. Uh, I'm here all the time so as soon as these start sucking air, uh, it's really easy for me to just top them off and everything stays fine. Well, again, I just pulled the light off of the refugium and it, it ran low to where flow was just barely trickling through the sump and it nuked that Chetomorph algae or what was left of it. And if you've never seen Chetomorph algae that has died, it goes very foul very quick and it can ruin a tank in a heartbeat. So next day comes along, Tuesday, I'm coming into the store, I unlock the store, walk through the door, and I'm just instantly hit in the face with an awful, awful smell. Uh, if you've ever smelled just a crashing, dying tank, it's not a good smell. And once you've smelled it once, you know what it is. So I walk through the door, smelled that and knew that something had gone horribly wrong in one of our tanks. Uh, it did not take me long to figure out that it was in fact this one. 
the sump is just absolutely rancid and it's just barely trickling some gross water up through the top tank. But it's enough to get all of these soft corals mad to where they start closing up and drooping. Uh, one or two things looked very unhappy, like they were starting to die and had some gross slime coming off off of them. Uh, all of the fish were gasping for air. It was not a good situation. Uh, so I instantly run around the store and find every bag of carbon that I possibly can and toss it all down in the sump. I knew I needed to do a water change too, but I actually just had to adjust the salinity on my salt water that I was mixing. So it was gonna need a minute before I could even use it. So knowing that I had done about all I could do, I left the store, locked the door, came back in about an hour and everything was fine. Well, for the most part. We unfortunately lost one or two fish, two fish. Uh, we had a little scopus tang in here. He didn't survive that event. Uh, one of our cardinal fish, he didn't survive that event. Uh, other than that though, uh, the carbon fixed the issue and we've been trucking live right along for about three weeks since that happened. Uh, again though, that's a really good cautionary tale. Uh, something as simple as just pulling the light off of your refugium and not thinking about it for two days can lead to your tank crashing if you're not paying enough attention. So anyways, that's pretty much it for an update on our 58 gallon soft coral tank good, the bad, and the ugly. Mostly it's been good, and it's been a really nice addition to our store. Uh, customers love it, and I can just watch the Xenia and all the rest of the soft corals all day. Uh, really, pretty often, I do sit here and watch them all day. Uh, we have a lot of exciting things planned for the channel coming up. Uh, when we upgrade this tank, we'll document that here on the channel. Uh, it's coming into the time of the year that we usually get some really cool livestock coming in, so we'll make sure to feature that. Uh, if all that sounds good to you and sounds like a fun time, uh, please like this video and subscribe to our channel because those are the two biggest things that you can do to help us grow. Thank you.